What's up, everybody? Welcome into the Pack-A-Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. And yes, it finally happened. Blake Bortles is a Green Bay Packer. I know that's probably the topic that everyone wants me to go over today, but uh, we've got more pressing issues to discuss at the moment. The Packers officially have a 2021-2022 football schedule, regular season schedule, preseason schedule, and I want to kind of spend my time today breaking down that in much greater detail. So let's do that and let's jump in and see exactly what the NFL scheduling gods were able to give the Packers uh, for this upcoming season. So I'm, I'm looking at this in almost probably every different way than most people are looking at this. So when most people get the schedule, they're looking at, all right, who do they play when, trying to maybe figure out wins and losses, and you know maybe making plans and traveling and all those sorts of things. When is, maybe when is the bye week, like general normal human people stuff when they look at an NFL schedule. I'm not looking at any of that. Um, I'm not so concerned. Like we knew who they were going to play for a while now, right? Which teams are going to play basically since the end of last season. This is just a random order, somewhat random order of those teams with some away games, some home games. So what order they fell in and, you know, the travel stuff and everything like that, for the most part, I don't care. I'm not going to read to you what the Packers schedule is. You've all seen the schedule by now. If you want to see it again, go to the Green Bay Packers website and view their schedule and you can view it there. On the flip side, what I'm immediately looking at is advantages and disadvantages that Green Bay were dealt based on their schedule. And yes, not all NFL schedules are created equal. And I'm not talking about the teams that they have to play. There's a formulaic approach to that based on how you finished the previous season and which teams you have to play this year, which teams are home, which teams are on the road. It's all a specific formula and it's all in that regards, fair based on what happened in the previous year. To me, they do a phenomenal job of scheduling teams and, and the system that they have and making sure that it's, again, a generally fair schedule, genuinely fair schedule for everyone involved. That being said, how you get scheduled those games can create a vast disparity in teams in their overall schedule and how fair it is for a given team. We've seen Green Bay have four road games in a five-week stretch. We've seen them have to go back-to-back-to-back road games. We saw them go, what was it, all the way East Coast to New York, all the way West Coast to Seattle, or it was vice versa, something like that, just a few years ago in Mike McCarthy's last season, where you have these really long road trips. There are absolutely things that make it much more difficult for you to play the sport of football based on the schedule that you are dealt. So today I'm going to be going much deeper into the schedule and I'm not looking at necessarily who they're playing. We don't know who's going to be good. The teams we think may be good, may have injuries, may just end up not being as good as we thought. And those games that we look at the schedule right now as super difficult, maybe our cakewalk teams. And on the flip side, some of the teams that we think are just chalk them up as wins, they might be end up being some of the best teams in the league. We just don't know. Injuries are always going to play a part. So let's look at what we do know and some of the, again, the advantages and disadvantages. So what are the, some of those things that I'm looking for? And just full disclosure here, I'm going to be reading some of this today. This is a ton of info that I'm going to be going over. I tried to do obviously a bunch of research ahead of time certainly not something that I'm going to be able to memorize. So I'm going to do my best to keep focus on you. But yes, I am going to be doing some reading today. So what are some of the things that I am immediately looking for when a schedule gets released? I'm looking for extended rest periods. I'm looking at bye weeks. Not only does Green Bay get an advantage from bye weeks, but do the teams that they're playing get advantage from bye weeks and extra rest? Are there any long travel periods, any games where they have to go three road games in a row or a huge you know, East Coast trip to a huge West Coast trip and then back home? Something like that, that would cause additional stress on a team. Are there any you know, situations where there's four games in 17 days? Or again, where you're playing you know, five weeks in a row and four of those are road games where you go road game, road game, home, road game, road game. Technically, you're not playing any like three game, you know, road stretches, but four out of five is really tough. And technically, 
like just because that one week is the home week, it's still like you're traveling every week, right? You go road, road, home, road, road. You're still traveling back and forth. So um, you don't get any level of consistency. I'm looking for those sort of things. Thursday night football road games, as you, I'm sure you know by now, a road game on Thursday night football is much more difficult. The win percentages for the road team on Thursday night football are not great. I think it's below 40% at this point, regardless of the matchups. It's just not a good matchup for the road team in those situations. Um, how consistent is your schedule? If you're playing a Thursday, then a Monday, then a Saturday, then a Sunday, then a Sunday night, then a game in Europe, like it, teams really live in consistency and get in their grooves. Is it a consistent schedule or is it completely disjointed and all over the place? And then again, I kind of mentioned this, but are there any extended road stretches or extended home stretches? Do you start your season with six out of you know 10 games on the road? Do you end the season with six out of 10 games on the road? Like how does that disparity kind of look um, for home and away games? So that's what I'm all looking at here when I first dig into an NFL schedule. So as we look at the Packers, let's, let's start with rest and which teams are getting bigger advantages with rest based on the schedule. So Let's start with week three at the San Francisco 49ers. In this specific game, Green Bay is at a one game rest disadvantage. So the Packers play Monday night football the week before against Detroit at home, and they then have to go short rest to San Francisco, West Coast road trip, and get one less day to prepare for that game because the 49ers play on Sunday, the Packers play on Monday. So they lose a day of preparation to the 49ers in that matchup. So not only are they the road team but and have to go West Coast, but they lose an additional day because they have that Lions Monday night game. All right, week five, let's fast forward a couple weeks. Cincinnati Bengals on the road. Bengals also have an advantage here. The Bengals play the Thursday night football game the week before that, whereas the Packers play on Sunday. So the Bengals actually have a three-day advantage where they get off that Friday, Saturday, and Sun or Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, where the Packers are still playing on that Sunday. So the Bengals pick up a three-game or three-day advantage in that game because they get three additional days of rest. Again, all of these things can definitely play a part. Fast forward to week nine. The Packers get a huge, a pretty huge advantage against the Chiefs. They have to go on the road to Kansas City, but Green Bay has a Thursday night game against Arizona the week before that. And the Chiefs have a Monday night game the week before that. So not only are the Packers on an, a little bit of an extended rest, but the, the Chiefs are actually on shorter rest. So Packers get extended rest, Chiefs are on short rest, and that actually could be a huge advantage for a, a game that promises, again, assuming you get Rodgers Mahomes and we don't know that for sure. Last time they played Mahomes was hurt and obviously everything with Rodgers is up in the air. Uh, but if you get Rodgers Mahomes as a marquee game, Green Bay gets a massive advantage. Even if, whether it's Rodgers or not, right? That's a tough game on the road at Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes that, that promises to be a very tough game. Green Bay will take any advantage they can get and having again a Thursday night football game whereas Kansas City plays on Monday, that's a pretty big swing for Green Bay in that matchup. Then we get two games that are not so great. Week 10, Seahawks at Green Bay, but the Seahawks will be coming off of their bye week. So a huge advantage to the Seahawks there. Week 12, two weeks later, Rams at Green Bay. Packers are the home team, but the Rams are coming off a of bye. So they have two teams that they have to play that are coming off a of bye week in both the Seahawks and the Rams in week 10 and week 12. Then week 14, the Packers actually get the advantage. They have the bye week in week 13. They play the Bears at home in week 14, and they will have that extra seven days of rest where the Bears do not. They play their normal Sunday game the week before. So a big seven day swing for the Packers in that matchup. And then last but not least, week 17, Vikings at Packers. The Packers play the Saturday the week before um, when they play the Cleveland Browns on Christmas Day. Um, so because they play Saturday, the Vikings play Sunday, the Packers actually get an additional day of rest and again, have the Vikings at home. So what it actually all ends up you know, calculating out to is the opponents actually have six additional days of rest than the Packers have. So the, the Packers will get less rest by six days than their opponents in 2021. Is that a huge difference? No, but it does give some of those teams, especially teams coming off bye weeks like the Seahawks, like the Rams, it does give them a pretty significant advantage um, in those specific matchups. And then again, I think the the Bears, you know, game when they're coming off a bye week, as well as the Chiefs game where you're coming off Thursday night football and the Chiefs are coming off Monday night football, Green Bay gets a couple of really solid advantages there as well. So 
Those are the big discrepancies and differences in just rest. Next up is consistency. How consistent is the Packers schedule? Remember, they play 17 games now. All but three are Sunday games. So a lot of consistency with their schedule, a ton of Sunday games, which is usual, you know, mostly the norm, but you know, you could get more Thursday games, Thanksgiving, you could have more Saturday. You know, like there's there are those games out there that can kind of trip you up and make things a little bit different. But they have one Thursday game, one Saturday game, one Monday game. So it's not like it's anything too crazy that they're gonna consistently be out of rhythm. They should, for the most part, have that consistent rhythm of playing on Sundays in all except three weeks and in, in really an 18-week season if you can you know, consider the buy in there as well. I think Green Bay has to be happy with the level of consistency that that schedule has. How about long travel? I think for the most part, Green Bay you know, really kind of lucks out here as well. They have to go all the way to San Francisco in week three on short rest, as I mentioned, coming off the Monday night football game. That is far, far from ideal. Uh, th- that's really what you don't want is to have to come and, and not only go West Coast, but then have a short week as well. So that's going to be a tough disadvantage to overcome. Um, and then they have, uh, but I should say after that week three, they're back home in week four. So it's not like they go West Coast to East Coast or like West Coast and then another road game, like or even West Coast back to West Coast, which is brutal as well. They go West Coast and then they come back home. Week eight, they go to the Arizona Cardinals. This is another one of those tough ones. Thursday night football game on the road. As I mentioned, the odds of winning those games go down significantly. It's, you know, you're less than, I think, 40% uh, with a chance to win that game. Just again, Thursday road teams really struggle. Plus, it's a little bit further of a distance. It's a different time zone. So Green Bay really going to be disjointed, uh, I'm sure, a little bit in that Thursday road game at Arizona. However, that next week, again, is where they get a little bit of that additional time off. They do go to Kansas City. So they have the Arizona game, go home, and then go back to Kansas City. But as I mentioned earlier, Green Bay gets that mini bye week, and uh, Kansas City has that Monday night football game. So it stinks that they have to go back-to-back road games, especially coming off Arizona and then going to KC and what are potentially two tough teams. Uh, but again, Green Bay gets a little bit of the advantage, especially in that Kansas City game when it came to the length of, of time off. Um, the the other big things here, no three-game road trips, right? So they avoided any three-game road trips and they don't have any of those where you're playing four out of five on the road. So they avoided like any real long stretches. And really they only have two times all season where they have back-to-back road games. So it's not like they're consistently traveling or have this long travel. I think overall, again, Green Bay has to be happy here with the level of travel that they have. Um, However, and that kind of gets into our next thing, there is a big discrepancy between their road games and their home games. If you look at those first nine weeks of the season, six of those games are on the road. Six games of their first nine are on the road. And there's no bye week in those first nine weeks. It's not till week 13. So they're on the road a ton. And even if you want to go a step further, seven of their first 11 games and seven of the first 11 weeks are on the road. That is a lot of travel in 11 weeks, seven destinations in 11 weeks to start the season. That won't be easy. And as you get to kind of that middle point of the schedule, other teams have had their buy. Green Bay hasn't yet. Like those could be, you know, that that middle part of the schedule could be really, really important. And again, that's where you have some of these Arizonas and Kansas cities and things like that. So watch out for that time period because again, you're going to get to the point where Green Bay's traveled a lot, um, hasn't had a ton of consistency with a bunch of home games. In fact, they don't have back-to-back home games in that entire stretch. Um, And again, you don't have a bye week yet. So Green Bay could be feeling the effects of that. And if you kind of look at some of that, just how disjointed it is in those first few games, this the first like 10 games of the season, this is how it goes. Road game, home game, road, home, road, road, home, road, road, home, road. Like that is a ton of road games. And again, no back-to-back home games. And it just, it, again, it's it's a difficult portion of the schedule. On the flip side, four of their last six games are at home. And I think the bigger point here, and going back to travel for a second, when they get home from that Kansas City Chiefs game on November 7th, that night, when they get back, maybe they get back November 8th, technically um, late at night. But when they get back from that game, from November 8th to January 9th, for two months, for two straight full calendar months, they only have three road games. And those road games at Minnesota, at Baltimore, at Detroit. 
Minnesota and Detroit are literally a hop, skip, and a jump away where you're taking a you know quick plane ride and you're there. That's barely traveling. So you have one like actual travel where you're actually going any sort of distance, and that's to Baltimore, which is about a three and a half hour plane ride. I mean, they're going to spend almost no time on planes from November 8th to January 9th for two months. So plus they have their buy in there. So four out of six at home, they have their buy week, very little travel. Like that's where you're going to start seeing Green Bay get regenerated and rejuvenated a little bit. And hopefully, assuming everything goes according to plan, that should make them, you know, hopefully a little bit more well rested than maybe some of the other teams when the playoffs come along. So those extended stretches, really tough to begin the year, definitely get some advantages towards the end of the year. Some other miscellaneous notes, they have to play the Saints in their home opener in week one. The Packers get to play their home opener against the Lions in week two. And then in week three, they play the 49ers in what's their home opener. So the 49ers open with two road games and then um, again, have the the week three home, uh, home opener against Green Bay. So Again, sometimes those games can be a little bit more tough. So if you're, you know, again, especially with fans in the stands for the first time and, you know, a full stadium in a couple of years, you know that that place is going to be rocking. So Saints week one, you know that crowd is just going to be insane. 49ers week three, you know that crowd is just going to be insane. So that doesn't make things any easier for Green Bay. For the Vikings in week 11, the, they play the Packers at home. It is a sandwiched home game. So they have two road games directly before the Packers. Then they play the Packers at home in Minnesota. And then they have two more road games. So I talked about earlier how that four out of five, um, when you have four out of five games on the road, it can be really tough. Even your home game's not easy. Green Bay gets Minnesota as their one home game in that five game stretch. Hopefully Minnesota is starting to get exhausted a little bit and uh, could be feeling the effects of that. Week 15 at the Ravens. Baltimore will be coming off of back-to-back -back AFC North battles against both the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns. So they're on the road two times against two tough divisional opponents. You know that Pittsburgh-Baltimore rivalry is always insane, hard-hitting, physical, and then they go at Cleveland. If you are to Cleveland, you remember that Cleveland Ravens game from a season ago was an absolute barn burner, and they went like, what, they each put up like 40-plus points. I think it was a super high-scoring game, if I remember correctly. Really fun game with Baker and Lamar both playing well that those both could be really tough, physical, challenging games for the, the Ravens. And then they get Green Bay at home and could very well be worn down in that week 15 matchup. And then last but not least here, week 18, um, the Lions are coming off two, a two-game road trip um, right before they play the Packers, including a West Coast trip to Seattle right before they play Green Bay. So Green Bay could have a little bit of an advantage there as well. Other couple really quick things that I'm looking for. What are some early transitions that teams you're playing with, you know, playing against early in the season? Well, week one, you play the Saints post uh, Drew Brees. He's obviously been the mainstay at quarterback for forever with that franchise. That's our first game post Drew Brees. So that is a transition point for that team. Week two, Lions, completely new coaching staff. So that is a completely, uh, you know, revamped uh, coaching staff and team because of that as well. So you're not, you know, you, you'll play them in week 18 as well, and they'll be well versed at that point, but you get them a little bit early, maybe before they've completely established themselves. And the flip side, you don't have as much tape on what Dan Campbell's trying to accomplish in Detroit. So that can make things a little bit challenging as well. And then week three in San Francisco, Trey Lance at quarterback, maybe, maybe it's still Jimmy G, but maybe you see Trey Lance, which could be a transition. And of course they have a new defensive coordinator as well. Of course, all these teams will be going up against Joe Barry as Packers defensive coordinator for the first time, and I guess a new special teams coordinator as well. So those are things that Green Bay will have to be aware of in those first three games. And then last, 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 but not least, what I also wanted to look at was, let's say David Bakhtiari is out for that first month of the season. Just what kind of pass rushers are Green Bay going to be facing on the edge with no David Bakhtiari? Well, week one, New Orleans Saints, Cameron Jordan and Marcus Davenport. Not great. Um, maybe not a top five unit, but like that's a pretty good duo in New Orleans with Marcus Davenport and Cameron Jordan, potentially with no David Bakhtiari to, to match up against them. Week two, Detroit Lions, Trey Flowers and Romeo Aquara. All right, you can live with that. Like, especially you're at home, you're at Green Bay, um, you get the crowd on your side, but no Bakhtiari still could be an effect there. Uh, week three, San Francisco on the road, ton of crowd noise, Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, D Ford, 
that's a nightmare. You would you really are hoping that Bakhtiari is ready to go and actually playing at a high level uh, by the time that week three San Francisco game rolls along. Will he be? Tough to say, but that's definitely one that you're going to want to keep an eye on. And week four, Pittsburgh Steelers, TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, still a little bit of a work in progress, but guarantee if no Bakhtiari is there, you're going to see TJ Watt playing a little bit more on that side. So Seeing Cameron Jordan, Marcus Davenport, Trey Flowers, Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, TJ Watt, D Ford, those type of players on that list in the first month, if David Bakhtiari is not available, not exactly some of the names that you want to be seeing on that list. Those were my big takeaways from the schedule. That was a ton to go over. I appreciate you sticking around for the full episode. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to be right back here tomorrow. Make sure to check out today's audio podcast wherever you get your favorite podcasts. But until next time, and as always, Go Pack Go.